This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. And welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be on this not so lovely Sunday morning here in LA. Uh, usually we have the sun shining, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. And I walked outside, I'm telling our producer, Mark, who's in Florida, that I said, I feel like I'm in Florida. You walk out, it's 80 something degrees, the air is so thick, and it's raining. So, uh, anyway, uh, my dogs don't even like it. My Labrador doesn't like the rain. Is he loves the pool, he does not like the rain. It's kind of crazy. Anyway, welcome, welcome. Uh, you're here live here on Pet Life Radio's Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff and on Instagram Live. Here for you, here for your pets. Anything you want to talk about, fair game. Fair game. A quick live request from my sister, brother in law, who obviously are worse at, at technology than I am. She does it every week, Beth, every week. <laughs> and you, you never want to appear on the show. Anyway, so I um, hope everybody had a wonderful week. I started my week actually pretty wonderfully. Monday morning, took off to one of my friend's places up in Lake Arrowhead and had a, a great day water skiing. I have not been on this lake water. This is the lake I learned to water ski on, and I have not been on this lake in 40 years. And as far as the skiing, I think the last time I used my great competition ski was 40 years ago. I, I may have skied once, like on a vacation, you know, where like you, you pay a guy and takes you out for a half hour. But it was absolutely great. Had a great time. Then we went hiking. I, we had ATV. So I'm riding around on an ATV. I'm subjecting myself to all sorts of bodily abuse. And I was fine. But Monday evening, walking down the stairs in my friend's cabin. I hate to call it cabin. It's, like a, it's huge. Four levels. Actually, it's called the O'Malley House because it used to be owned by Walter O'Malley, president, owner of the Dodgers. Anyway, and I was wearing my flops and just go down the stairs, run to my room to get something. And I slipped, landed, oh my God, right on my back. I either broke or badly bruised a rib, definitely tore some muscle. I am <laughs> in pain. I, I have to be careful. I can't laugh too hard and I can't sneeze. Um, I could, but I don't want to. The craziest thing, everyone's telling me after so many years being away from skiing, water skiing, oh, be careful, be careful, be careful. I'm very careful. It was great. but <laughs> And it's like riding a bike. You don't forget. You do not forget. But walking downstairs, now that, that could be very dangerous, especially wearing those, uh, those flops. Anyway, I am in pain and I have to be better in the next couple of weeks as we're going on a river rafting trip. I'm going to feel like an old man. So let's get some questions here. Did Coconut keep fleas away? Well, I would venture to say no, but the old school of uh, Avon Skin So Soft. Remember Avon Skin So Soft? That apparently was, had a good flea repellent property. Look, I don't argue with success. I, I don't know enough about a lot of these natural remedies, but if somebody's been using it and it works, then of course, keep doing it. It hasn't reached our my textbook yet, but guess what? That doesn't mean a thing. So um, let's see, Sonia, Poodle Maltese, 13 years old, recently just started licking a lot. What can I do? So when it comes to you know, this time of year, licking, first of all, it depends where she's licking. If yeah, It's interesting. I get a lot of cases where dogs are, are, are licking their feet. Now, first thing we think about when dogs lick their feet is going to be food allergy. Uh, you know, it's in dogs, you get a clue. I mean, look, the dog didn't read the book. They don't know what they're supposed to present, how they're supposed to present, where their lesions are supposed to be. But typically, lower back, above the base of the tail, think fleas. In the groin, the belly, the ventrum, right? think atopy, atopic, that's inhaled allergens. Feet and ears, think and rubbing the face like on carpet and stuff, think food. And uh, now, ah, here's a, but atopy also presents with ears. So if it's just ears, but I have a lot of dogs that are licking their feet. And more, more often than that, it's, it's one foot. And when you inspect the foot, there is nothing wrong. There's no skin irritation. There's no skin damage. There's no scab. There is nothing that would indicate, oh my God, this dog has some sort of dermatologic problem. So, when I really think about these is, believe it or not, why else would a dog lick, pick one spot especially, and just sit there and lick and lick and lick? So it is there. He's a thumb sucker. He's a nail biter. It is a release. It is stress. It is anxiety. 
and that's they find solace. They, they it just makes them more comfortable, just gently licking. They're not making doing any damage. So that is you know one thing. So so when dogs lick, I want to know: Are they leaving behind some sort of dermatopathy, some sort of of skin problem? Whether it's a redness called erythema, whether it's pustules, little pimples, whether it's you know severe pruritus, which is itching. Usually, when they, when there is and it's a medical issue, there's damage. You can actually witness it. Where it's not like, oh, my dog's licking a lot. You roll them up. I had one the other day. I, I could not see a single lesion. I did not see a flea. The dog was comfortable. And those are the weird ones because then you think, you have to think of maybe it is more of a behavior issue and, and instead. So, anyway, think about that. Okay. Let's see. I'm sure I missed a question here. LA Pet Care, hello. All right. Yeah. So, stomach area, arms. And I would be thinking about, you know, if it's down below on the ventrimal, what's called the lower side of the body, I'd be thinking about, and if there are lesions, I'd be thinking of atopy. Atopy is atopic dermatitis. And um, here's another problem we see when we have skin issues is that we can, if we treat just the underlying allergy, and there's some really good medications out there, all right? You know, the old thing we used to be atopica. Um, we used to obviously corticosteroids more to suppress the immune response. Then now we have something more specific. We have um, Apoquil, okay. Um, we have Cytopoint, and these are extremely, extremely effective. They really attack the interleukin 31, or in the case of Apoquil, they, they you know suppress the two enzymes, Janus kinase 1, Janus kinase 3, that actually work with and help interleukin 31, IL 31, do its damage in the skin. Of course, Cytopoint is immunotherapy that attacks interleukin 31. But if you don't treat, the secondary infection as well, which is also very itchy, then you're kind of defeating the purpose. So you have to treat the skin itself. If there's secondary infection, we call pyoderma, we need to treat with antibiotics. If the pyoderma is yeast related, we need to use antifungal. So you need more diagnostics. We got to get to the point where we're actually diagnosing a problem. And uh, whether it's skin scrapes, whether it's skin cultures, uh, cytology, we, we need to find out you know, what's, what's going on. And then we, we have to treat those, those issues as well. So keep that in mind. Let me see. Ah, okay, here we go. My life with corgis. Our neighbor was able to catch the feral cat. Ah, she had been feeding for a year. Uh, we brought it to the local vet. The cat went crazy. Oh, my God, yes. Boy, <laughs> been there, done that. Uh, and my dad advised to leave her outside. So, yeah, I mean, if they're so used to being outdoors and still alive and still feral, obviously this cat is pretty darn good. At what it's supposed to do and therefore try to make it you know an indoor cat it's, it wouldn't be impossible it would take a lot of patience really really thick long gloves that cover your entire arms and face and neck then yes but they are tough i mean i've often said i will take gladly the most aggressive dog over an aggressive cat any day of the week because they are so much faster so much better and so much more difficult to restrain than an aggressive dog. So yeah, I would say not to worry. And also, you know, while we're at it, let's talk for a second about what vaccines should this cat need? Well, if this cat is, has been out for a while, most likely from a protection standpoint, an adult cat, feral adult cat that's been outside for its entire life, all right, clearly has some pretty good impressive immunity that it's still here with us. So to give it a vaccine, and I know I talked to um, my vaccine experts, immunology, um, Dr. Jean Dodds, and she would say this cat probably does not need a vaccine. This cat has been exposed to so many things over the years, probably has a really, really good immunity. So, you know, why vaccinate? And I, I don't disagree. Okay, there was another good question here. Thoughts on new fin vitamins for dogs? Oh, I am not familiar. By the way, I've just introduced, uh, or we're in the process of, um, introducing my new line, Performance by Dr. Jeff. Look for it out there. Uh, we'll have a lot of products on my website, drjeff.com website. And we're going to get some of the things that we're working on in, into Amazon. So um, look out for it. Really, really good stuff. Very excited about it. As I said, it's my, my fourth go. Let's see, we started with, uh, oh my God, with Art Uline 100 years ago, Vets Help. And my good friend, Dave Brubaker, we, we were in mostly mass. And then we started our own line which was Jeff Weber Pets. And that was great also. That, I love that stuff. Then we you know, joined on with uh, Spectrum 
And uh, we started to do a line called ProSense. And that was also big mass market. I know it's a huge company. And you know, that's the kind of stuff that competes with hearts and sergeants. And they wanted to have the doctor. So they brought me on and I was the doctor. Then we did really, really, really well, selling really well. And then they realized, why are we paying this doctor guy? And now we've had our own name. We've already there. People know us now. And it's bye-bye. <laughs> it was just that. They were like, okay, listen to this. When I had Jeff for pets, our ear cleaner, which is amazing. We were the largest selling ear cleaner in all of Petco stores, right? So there's, remember, there was Pet Smarts and Petco Park in San Diego. So we were their number one selling ear cleaner. Now, instead of embracing us and saying, Jeff, what else you got? Oh, that's too nice. What do they do is these big companies, they made their own version. Could have been the same thing because our formula was patented and our own, but they could make it the same color and they can use the same bottle, same shape and look and everything. And what do they do? They put it right next to mine and they sell it for a buck cheaper. And um, guess what? It's unbelievable. Mass market. They can make you, but guess what? They can also break you. So, you know, they're lost because their product was not nearly as good as ours. So anyway, it is what it is. Live and learn. So let me see more before we go into break and see any question. Oh, the, oh they're NASC approved. I have to look into them. And again, so Sonia, still on site appointment for still legs. So first of all, check for fleas, okay? Only because... I don't care how good an anti-allergy medication is. If you still have secondary infection, whether it's yeast, you know, malassezia infection or, or bacterial infection, or you still have fleas, th these things are going to help a little. They're not going to solve a problem. You need to take care of the fleas. You need to take care of the secondary infections as well. And there are other things we see with allergy that are also itchy. Dry skin, right? Dry, flaky skin. You may need some you know, omega-3 fatty acid supplements. You may need a good you know, skin spray or some good wipes, derma wipes. It's a little plug for my product line. But yes, those things are really, really good. And to make it even more complicated, because life is complicated. And that is that some animals, because remember, there is a, a little bit of a difference in how Apoquil and Cytopoint work. And sometimes you need the overlap. That Cytopoint can't get at all because it's only good against interleukin-31, but there are other mediators of the inflammatory allergy response that Cytopoint won't touch. Okay, the Apoquil, all right, though not as good because it's not really attacking the interleukin 31, it's attacking enzymes, suppressing the enzymes that help interleukin 31, but those enzymes also help some of the others. So if it's pure interleukin 31, right, that is the culprit, then I'm going with Cytopoint. But if it's, there are others involved, other mediators, then I'm going with Apoquil. And sometimes you need to do both. So that's another thing I would try, but also look into some of the things like the omega-3 fatty acids, the medications, antifungal, antibacterial, bathing, there are other things. And then on top of all that, remember behavior. So it's not easy. And uh, you know, sometimes I'm not jealous at all. I don't envy the animal dermatologist when you have a really, really tough case like this. So anyway, all right. So here on Pet Life Radio, we have to give our our advertisers a chance to let us know what they're up to. So we're going to take a quick break here. And I'm here on, on Instagram. I will stay on. I will mute myself from the commercials. And Mark, you will give me a thumbs up when we're ready to go. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> So welcome back. We're live here again. We're just talking about food allergy. Had a, a great comment. And um, this is coming from uh, uh, Diving Into Color. 
So uh, she had a dog with obsessive paw licking and scratching, and she started Apoquil, which is, as I said, a great anti-allergy, and putting the dog on venison, and she's been seeing dramatic improvement. So we're talking about exactly that, is that you want to treat the allergy, and we're looking for, when we have a lot of foot licking, foot chewing, we are thinking food is a major possibility. And by the way, by the way, they say only about 15, maybe 20%, that's that's high, 15% of allergies across the board in dogs are food mediated. So people jump to the food right away. Uh, no, more likely than not, it's not food. So, but anyway, it can be, and the feet chewing is one of the, the prime symptoms. So basically started this. We're talking about novel protein diets, single antigen diets. These are things that the body has probably never seen before. Proteins like is it venison and bison and rabbit and duck, kangaroo. We used to have, that used to be a kangaroo diet out here. And, and the outcry, not from Australia. In Australia, they're going, they are a nuisance. Let's get rid of those kangaroos. But here, oh God, those cute kangaroos. And they, they had to take it off the market. They really did. It was called Response KP. It was kangaroo and potato or KO, KO, kangaroo and oats. And it, it was very effective. But anyway, go figure. And then as far as fish, you got tilapia, you have cod and salmon. So these are things that dogs will like. They will, and they're most likely haven't seen before. So they are, they probably aren't allergic. However, having said that, don't be surprised if they will ultimately develop an allergy because that's what happens in time. And so you can dogs, you can become allergic to something that you've had before. And you can also outgrow, which is what happened to me in my allergies. When I was a kid, I was allergic to everything. I started veterinary school with having tested positive to dogs, cats, horses, sheep, goats, cows, and hay. Now, was I a wreck? Fortunately, my symptoms were just sneezing and stuffy nose. Yeah, any of my classmates knew if they needed a tissue, let's go get Werber because he's got pockets full of them. And uh, yeah, it was, but I was giving myself allergy shots. And now, and obviously I have always, I always had a lot of animals. So now I have no food allergies and no pet allergies, which is really, really good. So hi to Bully Empire. Can dogs get fleas if, if taking Semperica Trail? Ah, yes, they can. So here's the thing about the isoxazolines. That's the new class, very effective class of flea and tick products. And in the case of two of them, that's Semperica Trio and Credelia Plus, also heartworm prevention. Okay, but they are not repellents. They get into the bloodstream. The flea will die once it takes a blood meal. So you might still see fleas on your pet, but you will not see the same flea twice. In other words, if and also having you know things change over the years, what we've learned, we've learned a lot of new things. Anyway, we used to think and say that for every one flea on a dog, there are between 50 and 100 in the environment. And that is not true. We know now that fleas are obligate parasites. They have to live on the pet. If they fall off the pet and cannot find another host, they will die. And likewise, um, that if a baby flea was the, would be the only ones, which is why they say you could be 100, because during season, a single female flea can lay anywhere from 25 to 40 eggs a day. Okay. So that's every day, 40 more fleas. So that's a lot of fleas, baby. So it's um, one of the things that, so we know is that when a flea larva hatches becomes, you know, comes a baby flea. As soon as it takes its first blood meal, something happens within that flea's digestive tract that now it's an obligate parasite. It needs the blood. If it doesn't get it, it's going to die just by not having the blood. So all the fleas that you're seeing on your dog are adult fleas, right? That need that blood. So when they take that blood meal and die, that's what cuts down the, uh, you hear my grandkids in the background, they're having a blast. So that's what is the issue, is the medications are not repelling fleas. And by the way, once they're, they're treated, these fleas are dying pretty quickly. So would I stop the apical after a month? Oh, God, it's, it's, a, it's a good question. You know what? Why you could start maybe trying it and see what happens. Because if it's all food, here's the only thing that I am concerned about is that the apical help as well. Now, would Hopscotch have seen the same response had he just, just been on the new food and nothing else? I don't know. But 
there's one way to find out. Let's taper and then ultimately stop the apple quill. And if we see in, in, uh, problems coming back, then you know, like many dogs, it's less likely that a dog is allergic to just one thing. So dogs that are allergic, it's very likely that there are going to be food allergies as well as environmental allergies, as pollen allergies, as things around the house allergies, tobacco, capoc, wool, feathers, uh, human dander. All right. These are all things that animals can be allergic to. So it is very possible that the apple quill is helping those and the medicine is helping the food. But there is one way to find out. And now you know what it is. Now, love these questions. Give me some more questions. Bee pollen has helped my chihuahua. That's a new one. Huh? I mean, I'd have to look into it and find out why. But now look, there is nothing that surprises me anymore. I've had clients tell me about these you know, strange remedies and stuff like that work. That's great. Okay, New York Yankee wants boiled chicken. All right, so first of all, let's, let's go over this. So a uh, 15 and a half year old Jack Russell, first of all, congrats on a 15 and a half year old dog. Prescribe half a Pepsi AC, right, once a day. Um, usually I recommend it in the evening and about 15 to 20 minutes before that evening meal. And I'm assuming, maybe I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, that it's being prescribed because she probably spits up some bile early in the morning or something in the middle of the night, uh, gastric reflux, and that's why we prescribe the Pepsi AC. Wants an ultrasound uh, within a month. Dog isn't eating her healthy dog food, wants boiled chicken. Well, boiled chicken, if the dog's not allergic to chicken, there's nothing unhealthy about it. If I had a dog that needs to be on something like that, and now I'm just worried about balance, Dr. Jeff has a performance, dog by Dr. Jeff has a product called Boost, hint, hint, that is just a, a vitamin supplement, also has omega-3s. So think about getting just a good, healthy vitamin supplement as well. And um, and then, then you could feed the chicken and you could throw in some vegetables. I can't imagine they're not going to like a little cooked oatmeal for some grain or some sweet potato or yams cooked, of course. So canned pumpkin. So I would slowly, if you know she's eating the chicken and slowly, you know, an eighth of a teaspoon for a day or two, and then bump it up a little bit and see if you get something else in there too. So and turkey and lean burgers, that's all good stuff. Okay. Hello, Lisa. All right. What do you do if a growth appears in a dog's eye? Well, first of all, we have to be really specific about this because most people say my dog has a growth in its eye. It's usually an eyelid growth. Could be a meibomian gland cyst. It could be a little eyelid mass, a tumor. So first of all, we have to preface, is this actually on the lid? Is it on the eyeball? Okay, meaning it's on the cornea. Those things can be surgically removed carefully. I love doing eye surgery. And then, or if it's in the eye, like in, like on the iris, which is the colored part of the eye, and you can see it looking, you know, through looking in the anterior chamber, obviously, unless you have a special device, you can't see what's going on in the posterior chamber, but in the anterior chamber, that's the front part of the eye from the iris and the lens up to the back of the cornea, then that also may be, need surgery, but that has to be done by a boarded ophthalmologist because you often need a specialized equipment. So I don't like doing operation operating in the anterior chamber. So that's what we need to know. So if it's on the eyelid, oh, let me have it. Love, I do a lot of eyelid surgery. And I do have a lot of eyelid plastics reconstructing the lid. So those are really, really fun. Corneal surgery, I, I can do as well. But anything behind that, I have to refer to the uh, ophthalmologist. A little sweet potato, yes, you know, okay, that's good. So uh, Leon only eats chicken. He won't eat anything else. Now, I mean, it, I'm not saying it's impossible, but usually um, when you see it, they won't eat anything else. If you snuck a little something in there, um, like as I said, an eighth of a teaspoon of some oatmeal mixed in with the chicken, cooked oatmeal, of course. I can't imagine because that stuff tastes good. But if he only eats chicken, then I would recommend some sort of balanced nutritional supplement. There are things called petinic, which is a little liquid. Uh, you can do little powders that don't really have much taste. Uh, you could do my chews, which are very tasty, and um, try to get something in there to balance things out a little bit. All right. Yes, I mean, if we've had problems before with a um, immune-mediated thrombocytosis, then that is a possibility. So no, it just if the dog, thrombocytopenia means there's not enough platelets. The platelets are very low. Oftentimes, it is secondary to a, an anemia from a hemolytic anemia, which is an anemia that doesn't attack the thrombocytes, but it also attacks or only attacks the red blood cells. But once these 
the body is attacking its red blood cells, it sometimes will just it's go so crazy in the attack mode, it'll get the platelets too. So how do you know whether your animal has a thrombocytopenia, which is a low platelets, is the same way we would know. They start bruising. You'll see something called petechiation. Petechiation are little red polka dots. If you lift up the gum and you see little polka dots, then that's thrombocytopenia. If they bump into something and get a huge black and blue mark, that's thrombocytopenia. So that means there's a clotting disorder somewhere. And whether it's a clotting factor, whether it's the platelet, that's what we need to find out. But doing a a taking blood work, that's going to help. Taylor, hi. You're so sweet. And uh, yes. (laughs) And anyway, yeah, great dogs. Great dogs. Love them. So uh, we have more coming. Let's see. We are past our time. No, I'm looking at Mark. He's giving me dirty looks. I'm wondering what the heck is going on here. So uh, anyway, so hopefully all of you here in Southern California, we stay dry. Uh, Of course, my son and his wife decided to leave us with his kids so he and she can go to Cabo. So they're in Cabo now. And what am I worried about? That their flight's going to get canceled. They're supposed to come home today. That means we get the kids for another one or two days. And it's not easy. (laughs) A a one and three. Oh, my God. One and a half and three. They are, I'm telling you, uh, they're getting their money's worth. because It is really tough. And the little one, he is the cutest thing ever. Name is Max. And his middle name is actually Max Mayhem. He is impossible. If he can touch it, he will. If he can break it, he will. If he can spill it, he will. It's unbelievable. You, gotta, you literally got to follow him around and everything's got to be 10 feet high. He, he's, he's unreal, but he's really, really cute. All right. Would I recommend giving taurine? Well, it all depends on what diets. If it's a cat and not getting enough, then yes. Most cat foods, commercial cat foods, have taurine. They add it. Dogs never really need it. They make their own as long as they have enough of cysteine and methionine, which are also sulfur-containing amino acids. They make their own taurine. But uh, when there was this whole craze with the the grain-free diets, will it hurt to add some? No, it wouldn't hurt. So uh, anyway. All right. So have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next week. And uh, if you have any questions during the week, please don't hesitate. Reach me here on Instagram, here on Pet Life Radio, Dr. Jeff, PetLifeRadio.com. Uh, let's have some fun. And if you want to join me here live, and now we know it can be done, is on either one. Bring your pets. Show me that, you know, seeing a problem, seeing the limb, seeing the mass, seeing whatever I'm looking at is much better than trying to hear about it or read about it. So, uh, as I said, pictures worth a thousand words of video. Oh my God, 100,000 words. Great week, everybody. See you next week. Bye bye. Let's talk pets every week on demand only on PetLifeRadio.com.